Have you ever felt like your service to God is a huge sacrifice? Very huge sacrifice. I know what is it's taking me to be in church. I know what is taking me to serve in that unit. After I have gathered my skill as a good keyboardist, as a bassist, I know what it took me to gather this skill and I'm using it in church. I know the sacrifice it takes me to appear daily in church. To serve in any form of capacity. Or maybe God has laid something in your heart as an assignment to do. The way, of course, God laid even in the Europeans that brought in the church to us. God laid in certain people's hands to leave their comfort and they come. Many of them died here. Their children died here. Have you ever sat down and calculated that man really serving God for me is a huge sacrifice. It is costing me a lot. Of course, if serving God has not costed you, then you have not started serving. But have you ever been in that position where you say, man, this is taking me a lot. I am going out of my way to do the service. But do you know the funny thing? Most times, it also comes with a mindset around it that makes you feel, have this feeling of sacrifice. And that feeling of sacrifice comes also with a feeling that you should be respected. My service to God should be properly ever. Do you know where I'm coming? I'm coming from Vicky. I come on Wednesday. I come on Tuesday. I come on rehearsals. I come on this thing. How dare you talk to me like that? Have you ever seen when people want to question how you treat them, they first play the card of what it's costing them. Look at me. I know what it takes me to be able to sew this uniform, to do this thing, to do this thing. I know what it costed me. So why will Pastor Buji talk to me like that? Why will my head of department talk to me like that? Person big so first. A man in the scriptures, John the Baptist, that the, that herald the coming of Jesus, sat down and calculated all the low cost and honey that he has eaten in his life without eating chow. And said, "Please go and tell Jesus, are you the one, or should we look for another one? Is there another one we are waiting for?" This guy, I'm a, does he know that I was in the wilderness? Shouting when men were in the city flexing. I was in the wilderness and shouting, Prepare ye the word of the Lord. So, does he know how many courses I bought online? To be trained and be able to be proficient in this level. See, Pastor, you have to treat me with respect. You have to treat me with a little more honor. I deserve this. See, listen to me. I know people are looking for me outside. If I pick up the mic, heaven comes down. And I'm here. You are, you are even putting me at the back of. You are not giving me the lead to sing. Do you know that every Sunday I have been in church, I could be somewhere making money. Such sacrifice. Don't you never say we celebrate you for your sacrifice. Don't you never say we celebrate you for your sacrifice. We are not looking at the person's face. You are looking at me. I'm not your neighbor. Say, say neighbor, we celebrate you for all your sacrifice. In fact, clap for your neighbor. Clap for your neighbor. Clap for you are doing well. Clap for the 
Amazing sacrifice. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Everybody, let's read verse 2 and 3. And saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Verse 3. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out his little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. So this is Jesus meeting. It's a very popular story that we know as Christians. Gets into the place that he wants to start his assignment. And he is desperately in need of a platform to stand upon and minister God's word. But look at what the Bible said in verse 2. Verse 2. He said, first of all, when he came there and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone to wash their nets. Verse 3. He got into one of the boats. The question is, who has the other boat? Two boats. He could have stood on any of them. He could have used any of them. Why do you think it was Peter's own that he entered? Why is it a coincidence that the person he entered his boat later became the leader of the apostles? One more time. We celebrate you for the sacrifice. Ah, for Peter, it was a huge sacrifice having to release his boat and push it back into the water so that Jesus will stand upon it and minister. But there were other boats. For every opportunity that God has given you to serve, for every call, Everything that God has placed in your mind and in your heart, you, you, are, you are there. There is a calling. There is a yearning to do something. Maybe God, God is putting it in your hand. Go and do this thing. Go and start this thing. Go and do this thing that has to do with kingdom advancement, kingdom purpose. For that same call, there are other people that that same call is being extended to. It's coincidence that in your family you have four sisters. You are the only one that can sing. The rest three sings of King. Do you think that the election and the choice of God in your life is a coincidence? Yeah, because do you know how many people that went to learn keyboard that didn't learn? You're a good teacher. When you read, you have understanding. And God gives you the ability to explain it further. Do you know many people that they gave you read the same book with you? When they explain it, you are asking yourself, is it what I read? And they try. They read it over and over again. You, you just get it, glance through it. When you start talking, people are wondering, where is this coming from? And therefore, that becomes an extension because of that ability. It becomes an extension of God. God calls you because of it and says, wow, this, this my daughter knows how to sing. It's a gift I gave her. So, there is, a, there is a mandate. There is something you need to use this to do for the kingdom. And you start feeling it's sacrifice. It's a privilege. 
for that your boat that God wants to use, he, there is another one. I'm not the only young pastor in Onisha. I'm not the only young preacher. I'm not the only person that has come in contact with the, with the scriptures or with the word of God. If there is a call of God upon my life, if I do not yield, imagine that Jesus told Peter, push your boat in a little so that I can stand. If he says no, what will happen? The Bible said when they came there, there were two boats. Tell them about two. For every call that God has called you, there is a substitute. There is an alternative. That is why in Love City, we do not we do not do superstar. There is nothing you do that anybody cannot do. There is nothing you do. In fact, if you even mess up, God will pick someone you think that is lower than you. Why are you talking to me like that? Do you know what I'm suffering to be able to play these instruments in this church? Do you know if I stop coming to choir rehearsals, there won't be a very solid backup. Their backup will just be, their backup will be doing like this. I come all the way from Mpo. I enter transport. First of all, pass here, go to Egerton, then come back. Do you know the, do you know what is taking me? Do you know do you know what is costing me? And God is saying, there are <laughs> sit down, sir. There are a man of God came out one day and said, God, I am angry. I am angry. Only me. I am the only prophet. That has not bowed to bow in this whole southeast. I am. <laughs> I am the last remnant that has carried the glory and the oil of God. And God is looking at him. I said, what are you saying? I said, what are you saying? He said, come. He said, come. Come close. He said, I have thousand virgins, anointed virgins that has not bowed to bow. He said they have not tested bow before. They are, they are not people that bow to bow and repented. You, you have met Jezebel, your oil has been contaminated. I said, I have, I said, I have them kept that has not bowed their knees to bow. So imagine with that mindset that the prophet was saying, if I vex now, I'll just spoil this God's call. God would, <laughs> God would just be stranded. God, no vex me, I'll just die. You. I'll just kill myself and nothing. And, and if God decides to just keep quiet and allow him to kill himself and, the, and takes him to heaven and he sits there and watch and see 1,000 people come out from the cave with fresh oil. This is what I'm doing. It's costing me a lot. God should look at the sacrifice I have gone through for his work. So you think God is stranded? You think God should be stranded? When I started ministry, year one of ministry, I had someone a media, somebody a media. He was the only person that knew how to snap picture in church that time. 
So he will carry his chaka on camera. When he will snap you, you'll be looking at yourself. The, your head is big, your body. Yeah, I don't know what he does, but the pictures and everything just looks quite different. Over a period of time, we started having problems with his job. You are worshipping, he will just snap you where you are. Wobble. And we will go and wash the picture. And come and force you to buy. People that came to church, you are now forcing them to buy picture. The guy got angry. When I started telling him, so, oh God, you can't force people to buy. They came to serve God. Then you snap them. Before service, you don't rush. Go wash and bring them back. You are still doing workers meeting. You have brought bad picture. Say, so, oh God, see you. Where you play keyboard? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then the worst is that the pictures are not fine. Being that I was this media, I'm someone that loved the media. The guy started throwing causing problems. Said no, that they are not valuing his service. Does the church? The church didn't have camera. I didn't have camera. He said, "Did we give him camera? No. Do we pay his transfer? No." Am I not the head of department of this day? No. Am I paid for it? No. Do you know how much my service does work? You want to drink water? Okay. Do you know how much my service costs? We are saying sorry, sir. Don't be angry. Just don't snap us after service. <laughs> Members were not happy. The guy got angry. I said he was doing what? He was leaving. The same week he left, Don Jenny came with his whole instrument, joined the church. No, I think Don Jenny was even there. He was even there, and the guy didn't even know. He was Don Jenny was that time he was in choir singing. Off key. You left your ministry, you are in another place. Instead him, instead him, instead him. That's all. That's all. That's all. Eh? <laughs> and the media guide felt the church stop. He was occupying somebody's position. God gave him the opportunity to serve and bless him there. But he felt, do you know my sacrifice? Do you know what I'm taking? He said, it is a privilege that God chose your own boat. Of all my mates, everybody, God decided, came to a boy said, and called me. It's a privilege. There were other boats there. Why did he ask me to push my own boat? Why am I the one that God anointed with voice in my family? Especially when you feel you are the only one that can do that. Thing. When I started the ministry, for me, the my first music director met me one day and said, "I want to." Sing. Before he came on Monday, God told me this guy is going to resign. Of course, what happened was that I traveled, the assistant pastor. Was trying to correct him. He had he openly verbally challenged him. And I came back. I told him, say, you do not do that. That is wrong. That person is on dedicated authority. He's walking in my stead. And for you to have challenged him like that, you are challenging me. And I, I called the workers' meeting and I addressed it. On Monday, he says, Sir, I want to see you. When I sat down, God told me this one is going to resign. I said, Okay. I came, he told me, Sir, because of the way you talked to me during that meeting. I want to 
tender my resignation. I told him, okay. I said, number one, uh, that uh, uh, you don't need to start writing a letter to it. A letter of appointment was not given to you. That this verbal one you have done. Yeah. I said, this verbal one you have done is okay. I said, no problem. So he just said it. I said, okay. I don't know whether he was expecting for me to say, you know, a man of God, please, you know. And um, and this guy was someone, you know, I grew up with. We sang together. We were in the same uh, choir, kind of, and all that. So he, told, he said that he was going to resign. He didn't like the way I talked to him. I said, okay. I just said, okay. He said, uh, I said, okay, no problem. On Wednesday, I came to church and after uh, uh, midweek service, I told him, I said, um, please, our former music director is um, uh, moving to higher calling. Pastor Francis. I said, he's moving to higher calling. What was the higher calling? Nothing. He said, he's moving to higher calling. I said, our new music director is uh, done success, Chimwai. He was shocked. He had not been a music director before. He had not directed before. He had not. He was shocked. Made the, made the music director move the other person assistant. Called him out. Let him put his hand. May the grace of God upon my life rest upon me. You will lead these people, you will do greater. Yes. But the Bible said, when the oil of God came upon Saul, he became a new man. People do not understand the. They said, stay up the gifts that is in you by the laying on of hands. They think it's play. They think that laying on of hands is play. You don't know the one you were functioning was because of the laying on of hands. When the person unlay it, you start having problems. You know what happened? One month later, the choir grew. Boom. 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 He came back. I said, sir, that he was sorry. I said, no, even I forgave you. Even that day. He said, uh, that what he's saying now is that I should give him back the... Is that? I said, oh. Give him. I said, what will that now happen? The other ones that have been promoted up, I will now demote them. Because the original superior person is there. Listen to me. That music director is the lead pastor of our expression today. Today. Someone that, that felt unable to lead a choir. Switch of boats. Some of you that know that music director, you know that if he was here now, he's strong. And now, after how many years you've gone to answer call again? You missed the first initial opportunity of the boat that was given to you to be part of something that would have changed your life. But you felt you were sacrificing too much and you should be treated with as a special. If God decides to use your boat, it's a privilege. I know you're a banker. If God has chosen you amongst all the bankers, it's a privilege. If God has chosen you amongst all the businessmen, it's a privilege. If God has chosen you amongst all the pharmacies, it's a privilege. You shouldn't treat it with so much. You are, you are doing something that God should be. Every morning, come and tell you, say, my son, my son, who is like unto thee? My son, my son, idiot. If it is not because of you, wouldn't my work, my work would have been stranded? In Luke, in Luke, a time came Jesus. Some guys came and they were praising Jesus. And some people said, keep quiet, keep quiet. Jesus looked at them and said, if you tell them to keep quiet, he said, I will raise even the stones. 
to do that. You can't stop my work. You are not too big. You are not an executive. You are a servant. You are a worker. If you are not there, my work... In Israel, there was a time a man of God was feeling too big to hear God. God started calling his servant. The guy is sleeping. Somewhere, somewhere, the guy wake up. Somewhere, somewhere. The guy will he run to the man and say, Sir, I say, I'm not calling you. Somewhere, somewhere. The man that has been hearing God before, that knows how God speaks, said, It might be God calling this guy. But why did God leave me and he's calling my servant? The guy didn't even have a place to sleep in the house. He was sleeping inside the church. Somewhere, somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. He said, tell him, ask him. When he calls this time, speak for thy servant. God boycotted even a prophet and spoke to a donkey. The prophet will run and say, move, move. Move, move. Instead of doing, eh, he turned and said, man of God, are you not seeing? I thought you had a prophet. Is your eye blind? Can you not see spiritual things? Donkey. He said, what are you saying? I said, you are not seeing this angel with sword and this offense. You are telling me, move, move. If you are me, will you move? <laughs> God boycotted a prophet and used a donkey. So why will somebody that knows how to play do fast or who does a transfer? He said that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this whole church need to stand still. Let me pass. I am the pro bassist. I'm the pro keyboardist, the pro drumist. You know? No, you can't hold us responsible. There is another ship that is ready to take your place if you do not understand. Katrikuma said, I am God's second choice. She said it that there was another person. If you read God's general, she said there is another person that God gave the mandate on her life. The person didn't answer the call. She that she was not God's original choice. She was God's second choice. Why will your sheep be there and God, having asked you first, turns around and goes to you? He has been asking you. Be serious. Be committed. Get involved in the department. Answer the call full time. Do this. He said, no, no. Let me marry first. Let me marry. Okay. After marry, let me give birth to children first. After giving birth to children, let me train them. After training them, let me do small business so that I will be able to establish to sponsor the work. Then from them, well, should I even do that work? Can't I now be sending people? Then before you know it, we are 76 years. We have called daughter called you. Come out, you are crying. I surrender with walking stick. What are you surrendering? What is remaining that you are surrendering? What do you have left that you are surrendering? This is the time. Bad on your heads. Bad on your heads. Ask God to help you. <laughs> it's a privilege. Say, Lord, thank you for the privilege you have given me to use my boat. If there was time, I would have told you, see what happened after they, their boat was given. <laughs> when the guy saw miracle, he said, depart from me. I am, I am an unworthy man. I am an unbeliever. The same thing people were pursuing. Started pursuing him. Not breaking miracle. What you are looking for is in the full obedience. Full obedience. So that you don't regret it when God has decided to choose another one. There is another ship that God is also talking to while talking to you. While he's giving you that vision, that idea, there is another person he's also talking to. 
He's telling you, move to Oboko. Move to this place. Go here and start the expression. He's putting these ideas in you. He is also talking to another person. If you are not serious, Jesus will jump ship and move into another ship. It was not a coincidence that he chose you. There is something he has in mind. There is something he's been telling you to do in church for his kingdom. And you have not done it. You are feeling, eh, eh, why will I sacrifice this my boat? Why? God is telling you, give this thing. Sponsor this project. Do this thing. You are, you, are, you are coming up with all your excuses. Listen to me. There is another person he's talking to by the side. And if the person does that, the person will take the net breaking miracle. Why are you wasting time? If you can't do that thing now, when will you do it? When you are 80 years? Why can you not hearken to the word of the Lord? Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing. Every other thing includes every other thing. Why can you not obey? He said, Peter, push your boat forth. She, he obeyed. He obeyed. But it was not he, his boat was not the only one. There were other boats. It's not a coincidence. It's a privilege that God chose you to serve in every capacity. Don't push the sacrifice on our face. Don't make us suffer for the fact that God chose you. It is a privilege. There are other ships you could have chosen. There are other bassists. There are other keyboardists. There are other drummers. There are other singers. There is other usher. There is other guest servant. There is other media person. He has them. A thousand of them that has not bowed to Baal. People are anointed. They will be willing to do it with all their heart and see it as a privilege. It is a privilege that he has called you. It is a privilege that his hand is upon you as a minister, as a pastor's wife, as a pastor, as a head of department. It is a privilege that God's hand is upon you. He could have chosen other men. He could have raised stones for himself. He could have intercepted other people the way he intercepted Paul. But he kept pursuing you. Kept chasing after you. Kept telling you, push your boat forth. I want to use your boat. I want to use you for my purpose. I want to use you to achieve something. He's, he's putting those ideas in you. And he's telling you, go and do this. As he's telling you, he's speaking to another person. There is another boat. If you don't make haste, you will miss the miracle. Quit procrastinating. Go all out. Go and take it. He's talking to you. He's talking to another person. There is another boat. Two boats. 